welcome to lecture 18 which is on uh, different types of resolution which we use in remote sensing. So, in this lecture we will understand what are the different types of resolution and what is their utility when we try to select a particular data set for a particular application. So, we begin the lecture. When we are talking of the resolution, this is a term uh, which we define the ability of any sensor which we are using in remote sensing, whether it is active sensor or the passive sensor, uh, ability to distinguish the difference when we try to resolve the objects they are physically near or spectrally similar. So, if the sensor is able to distinguish any small changes in the object or resolve the difference between the two objects that is called the resolution. So, it defines the smallest physical unit of an observing signal by a sensor and that is basically the view which is from the top. So, a high resolution if we say we have very high resolution data or we have very resolution data what is the meaning of that? Meaning of that is high resolution will allow us to see very very small objects, the adjacent object to the targets, the boundaries and we uh, can actually pinpoint very very small areas. When we have a low resolution image probably we cannot identify those individual targets from that. So, the high resolution and low resolution data or medium resolution data they are very very important to us whenever we want to identify the object from the satellite image. So, here we can see that the satellite is uh, taking the images of the ground and it is uh, looking at some area at a particular instant. So, this basically is determining the resolution. So, let us understand what are the different types of resolutions which we are using in remote sensing. There are four categories of the resolution, one is the spectral resolution, the second category is the spatial resolution, the third one is the temporal resolution and the fourth one is the radiometric resolution. When we are talking of the spectral resolution, we are talking of in this spectral resolution we are talking about the uh, the size and number of wavelength intervals which we are using. We are using a uh, single wavelength or we are using multi spectral wavelength, several wavelength region, we are using visible part or we are using infrared part or we are using the microwave part. So, different wavelength region uh, we are talking in this spectral resolution. So, sensor as we know that can collect the data in more than one spectral wavelength region. It is sensitive to uh, collect the data, it is sensitive to the spectral reflectance when it is collecting the data in several part of the spectral wavelength region and such sensors we are calling as the multi spectral sensors. So, we call them multi spectral sensors those who can give me data in different part of the electromagnetic spectrum. The second term is the spatial resolution. So, spatial resolution is best defined by the size of the image pixel. So, image is consisting of digital image is consisting of those pixels and each pixel has a size. So, what is the size of that it is determined by the spatial resolution. The third category is the temporal resolution. It is the ability of the satellite to cover an area repetitively after a certain interval of time again I will get the image of the same area. So, that defines the temporal resolution. So, I get a repetitive image of that area in order to carry out the temporal analysis in order to find out the changes which are taking place in the area. The last here is the radiometric resolution. So, radiometric resolution is the ability of the sensor to detect the small changes. So, here I will uh, talk about the bits and bytes. So, let us take one by one and try to understand in more detail their importance. So, first one is the spectral resolution and 
it is that characteristics of the object which is we are using to identify the objects which is present in the photograph using the wavelength you know we vary the wavelength and we try to identify those objects as we have learned in our previous lecture on spectral signature. So, here spectral signatures are very very important because we are changing the wavelength and try to identify two uh, dissimilar objects which are giving me similar reflectance characteristics. So, we have to find out what are those wavelength interval in which the sensor should operate and collect the data or we should make a selection of the data in those wavelength region. So, finer is the spectral resolution, the narrower will be the wavelength region of a particular channel or band. And the example here could be you know we have the data nowadays uh, in different channels from different satellites. So, as you can see here in the diagram uh, the spectral signature uh, spectral uh, resolution is shown the data is collected in various parts of the wavelength region. So, so one is the blue wavelength region. The second data is collected in the green part of the electromagnetic spectrum, the red part of the electromagnetic spectrum and the near infrared part of the spectrum. So, there are we have the four images there and uh, these four images are taken for the same area by the same sensor which is operating in the different wavelength region. To our eyes these images may look like similar, but spectrally if we look at the different objects or the information content which is present here they are different. Some objects would be much more clear to me on the near infrared data while the other objects would be much more clear to me on the blue band or the red band. So, all the data sets if I study them together will be optimum for identifying the various objects which are present in this particular area. So, that is why this images which are taken in the different narrow part of the electromagnetic spectrum are very very helpful to us. Now, you can see here the uh, wavelength region on x axis and the in each of the wavelength region like blue part of the spectrum the first image which is shown here. Then in the red part of the spectrum the image is shown by letter 4 here the 6, 8, 10 and 12. So, these are you know different images which have been taken in the different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. So, width of the channel is also different uh, as you can see the blue here the wavelength range is much more as compared to the red which is much much smaller. Now, if we look at the uh, spectral characteristics, if we look at the uh, visual information content which is present on these uh, 6 images we find that probably some features are very very clearly identified from the first image which is number 2 some features are very clear on image number 8. So, a combination of these will give me the best utilization in terms of the thematic map creation. If I want to create a thematic map, I want to show the various categories, the maximum classes which are present on the surface, then one single image will not be enough. Like if I take image number 12 probably uh, I can I, I cannot identify many many classes from this particular image because of the clarity because of the spectral information which is present on this within a narrow range all the spectral information is present. I want a wider range area to be covered by the image. So, various gray shades should be present in the image in order to visually inspect and identify the object. The, uh, spectral resolution the after the spatial resolution the next term is the spectral resolution. So, we have uh, poor spectral resolution we have the medium we have the higher spectral resolution images nowadays. So, we uh, can have 
different spectral resolution images, but if we take for example, uh, a poor spectral resolution images there might be a confusion between some objects. So, water and vegetation cover may look like similar to me because of the poor resolution although they are different categories on the ground, but uh, because the resolution of the image is so poor the size of the pixel is so poor that it is very very difficult for us to identify that these are two classes. So, uh, we have to actually differentiate between the classes that is why we have to select proper spectral resolution. And the example here is suppose we want to uh, further categorize within the forest which are the deciduous forest area which are the coniferous forest area categorization within the forest area if we have to do we can do that. If we want to identify various kinds of vegetation species in the area if we want to find out um, uh, in the water itself whether it is a turbid water, polluted water or a clean water. So, uh, as we go for sub categorization of the major class we require better and better spatial resolution images we call it high resolution images. Now, what are the uses of the uh, spectral resolution. So, 0 0.35 to 0 0.5 micrometer region for example, is very very useful for chlorophyll absorption. So, likewise you know we can identify which are those regions like 1.35 to 2.5 micrometer region is characterized by the strong absorption by water which is present in the vegetation. So, we can identify which are the bands where water is very clear, which is the wavelength region where turbid water is clear, which is the wavelength region where I, ident I can identify the vegetation cover with the water. So, these wavelength region are helping me actually to select the right kind of the satellite image in order to carry out the analysis. Now, we see that the spectral information content for you know different types of the vegetation cover. So, we can see that this is uh, the area where there is a lot of confusion the curve is vertical. So, this particular wavelength region is not very very useful when I try to differentiate actually uh, between the vegetation cover which has a broad leaf area which has a small leaf area. So, further categorization may not be possible, but the moment I go for uh, this region of the uh, electromagnetic spectrum, the higher wavelength region, I am trying to differentiate the reflectance characteristics of these particular features. So, further categorization as per the size of the leaf can also be done using these images. So, this is a standard curve where it shows that you know the uh, leaf pigment can be identified in the lower part of the wavelength region, the cell structure and the water content because these are the water absorption band. So, this is a typical standard curve for the vegetation and it gives that how the vegetation is behaving as you change the wavelength region how the spectral reflectance is behaving and this kind of a curve is also very very useful to us. So, when we have data which is collected in different part of electromagnetic spectrum, we can create a color composite and you will see that how that individual images which are black and white in nature can be used to create the color. So, I am showing you the example of Landsat thematic mapper image and here you will see that the first band uh, if uh, which is a uh, basically a black and white image I pass through the red filter. So, the image will look like uh, red to me here uh, because it is passed through the red filter. So, red band I am showing on the red that green band green part of the wavelength region I am passing through the green filter and now superimposing the two. So, here what you see is the composite product of the red and green band. Now, I superimpose the third one which is the blue. 
So, blue band I pass through the blue and superimpose this. So, I have taken three primary colors red, green and blue RGB and try to superimpose them passing through the respective filters red, green and blue filter. So, what I get here now from those individual black and white I am getting a image which we call as the color composite image and this is a false color composite this has been created because here the vegetation cover would appear to me um, you know with the different shades of the orange and the reds. So, from now instead of identifying the objects from the individual image in different part of the spectral wavelength region I try to superimpose them together and make a color composite and identify that color composite because our eye is also more sensitive to color regions than the black and white gray shades. So, this image is much more uh, informative as compared to individual black and white bands. So, these color composites can be created once we have the multispectral data and it is very very useful in order to extract the information, carry out the measurement, prepare the thematic maps and so on. So, approximately three primary colors have been used. So, when uh, we are taking uh, say for example, creating the false color composite, we are taking the near infrared band actually we are passing through the red gun, red band we are passing through the green and green we are passing through the blue. So, we are taking this composition and we are trying to create a color composite which we call as the false color composite something like this and here now you can see that we have uh, details much more clear. So, vegetation has come out to be much much clearer to me in the uh, red and the orange shades and the urban area is the uh, the urban setup is shown here the bluish tint we can see uh, the linear features we can see individual here individual uh, fields also cultivated fields also shown different shades in those uh, agricultural fields are showing the different types of the crops or the different moisture condition or the maturity of the crops. So, this is a matter of further investigation when we carry out the interpretation, but this kind of a color composite if we create and try to identify the objects and try to carry out some kind of a visual inspection of the image we can identify many many objects right sitting in the laboratory. Then the spatial resolution which defines the geometric resolution of the data. So, this is the separation between the two measurements so that we can discriminate these two objects and it will be defined by the size of the pixel or in other words we use a term called instantaneous field of view IFOV. So, it also depends the identification of the target within this spatial resolution also depends upon the reflectance from the object and its background. So, there are certain objects which are giving us a very dark kind of a uh, shade and the surrounding is giving us very strong reflectance in that particular object although may be smaller than the size of the pixel we can identify it very very clearly because of the surrounding reflectance which is coming from that. So, for example, road in the coniferous forest. So, road width may not be uh, equal to the size of the pixel may be much smaller, but we can see that particular linear feature very very clearly sometimes from the satellite image. So, we have different levels of the spatial resolution, uh, we have um, very high resolution image high resolution image, medium resolution image and coarser resolution image. Please remember that there is no fixed definition when we are defining the various types of resolution numerically in terms of the high, very high, medium and low, then there is no clear cut definition because uh, 15 years ago the satellites when we did not have very, very high resolution satellite data, then high resolution satellite data were used and they were called very high resolution data. Now, we have uh, less than 1 meter resolution, so they are called very high resolution data. So, this uh, definition is keep on changing as we get better and better satellite images. 
as an example there are uh, satellite images with different sensors we have a landsat with 80 meter spatial resolution then we have thematic mapper data with 28.5 meter resolution in band 7 then we have indian remote sensing satellite data 22.5 spot data French satellite 20 meter and 10 meter resolution, Aster data at 15 meter, IRS pan data at 5 meter resolution, quick bird pan data 0 0.6 meter in pan. So, different kinds of satellites uh, are giving me a different resolution satellite image and we know that then the resolution becomes uh, poor. Okay. 80 meter resolution will cover a larger area as we go for 5 meter resolution it will cover a small area. So, a smaller area will give me more detailed information while 80 meter will give me broader information. So, this is the relationship between the information content of the and the spatial resolution which is available from the satellite image. This example will show you that we have a American football field the green one here the entire and how much area will be covered by different satellites at different resolution. So, if we take the outer boundary black one here, this is the IRS our Indian remote sensing satellite at 36.5 meter resolution. So, this will cover you know one pixel will cover this much of area. Then Landsat at 30 meter resolution will cover further smaller area, the spot 20 meter resolution will cover further small area. 10 meter will cover further small area and Iconos 1 pixel will cover further small area. So, as the uh, pixel size is becoming uh, smaller and smaller or in other words the resolution is becoming better and better special resolution the area covered becomes small and we get much more detailed information about the ground from that satellite data. So, you can see from this example. Uh, we have example of high spatial resolution data, same area is covered on the medium spatial resolution data and a low spatial resolution data. So, uh, we are able to see very clearly the road junction, the circular intersection and the different types of building with different shapes, orientations, but the image as uh, we change the resolution we take the medium spatial resolution then the boundary becomes blocky hazy. So, we are not able to see the sharp boundaries in the middle image which is the medium spatial resolution image and in the low spatial resolution image uh, there is a loss of information. So, very very difficult in fact to identify the exact boundary between the road and the buildings and whether really. Uh, we can identify those small buildings from this data or not. So, when we have uh, a low spatial resolution or you can call it a poor resolution data then uh, the information content you know the type of information which was available to us from the high resolution data that has gone. So, it now really depends you know on our application what kind of information we want to extract we can go for the different spatial resolution images. So, this example shows that less than 1 meter spatial resolution when we have the data we can see individual buildings and individual streets and the roads then this is tens of meters at resolution. Uh, you can see the cluster of the buildings now it is very difficult to identify each and every building and when you have the kilometer then you can see a very very large area the entire topography of the region. This is another example of spatial resolution and we know the these are the images when there was a, a attack on the world trade center. So, how the how this looks like from the satellite data at different resolutions. So, so this is Manhattan area uh, in 2001 Landsat 7 we can feel uh, that there is a smoke coming we can see in the center of the image that there is a smoke coming from there. But uh, you can hardly see which kind of a building, which kind of a feature this smoke is coming. But as we improve the uh, resolution, we can see that uh, uh, we start seeing some kind of a cluster of the buildings, then 
we go for uh, spot data further the information content improve and uh, when we go for the iconos data the information content further improves and probably we can see the height of the building also uh, from where the smoke is coming out. So, this kind of a identification of the feature at different resolution is very very important. So, this also shows now that uh, this is uh, 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 in fact the uh, showing you at a 0 0.5 meter resolution image and uh, this is showing you uh, this is the image of the harbor town uh, and this is showing you 80 meter by 80 meter resolution image. So, hardly you can identify anything uh, if you go the to top row first row you can identify the objects, but if you go to the second row and the third row where the resolution becomes poor and poor it is very very difficult actually to identify the features. So, uh, the thing is that we have to uh, make sure that we select the proper spatial resolution satellite image. The third category here is the temporal resolution and temporal it relates with the time frame and we know that there are certain features which will change on the ground. Uh, there are features will be which have very slow change on the ground, there are features which will change with a moderate rate and there are features which will change all of a sudden in case of say flood, in case of the earthquake, the topography, the ground features will change all of a sudden. So, we have various kinds of a features, but there are changes which are taking place like urbanization, a new road has come up. So, these are the changes uh, in the infrastructure with respect to time. So, we ha have to have the satellite images uh, which are repetitive, which are uh, giving me information after a certain interval of time and I can see the previous images also. So, I can have uh, a time series of the images and try to analyze the same area from those time series of uh, images and see what changes have taken place over a period of time. So, this is uh, temporal resolution is the revisit period when we are launching the satellite in the orbit after a certain interval of time it will give me the image of the same area again. So, that defines the temporal resolution when it gives me uh, when it will scan the same area after a certain period of time that is the temporal resolution and this is shown here for Landsat satellite in this diagram. So, in the Landsat satellite what is happening is that after 16 days you know it will cover the whole of the globe after 16 days then it will give me and 17th day it will give me the uh, image of the first day again. So, I will have after 16 days interval the repetitive image of that area. So, this is called the temporal images and these temporal images are also very very helpful to me. As an example of the temporal resolution for Landsat it is shown suppose we have a one image which is taken in June 1 2005 then the second image of the same area by the same satellite and the same sensor would be available to me in June 17 and then July 3 and so on. So, till its whole life I will get those repetitive images. So, I will get a very very large number of images that means the same area is being monitored after a regular interval of time and those images uh, will give me flexibility to monitor the changes which are taking place on the earth surface which are taking place on the target which are present on the earth surface. So, um, how often the repeat satellite data is available that is the question because different satellites will give me this repeat data after a different interval of time. It is not a fixed quantity it depends upon the height it depends uh, height of the orbit in which the satellite data is moving and also the speed velocity of the satellite. So, repeat cycle will tell me when the satellite is passing over the same place again. So, that I can plan my study that I will get the data after so many days of the same area and I can decide that how many satellite scenes I require actually to carry out that temporal analysis. So, we have two kinds of uh, satellites geostationary weather satellites and sun synchronous 
you will learn in the subsequent lecture also. So, we have uh, you know few hours every few hours will get the image of that area, but very large area will be covered and the resolution will be coarser kind of a resolution. But if we want a good resolution then we have a, you know sun synchronous orbit satellites and typically we can get smaller than that also typically 16 to 35 days interval uh, we can get the data from the sun synchronous satellites and we can have uh, several temporal images in order to study the change. If we want very free frequent images then there is a possibility to do that also. We want lesser than 16 days then uh, we can change the view angle for a certain satellite and also we can have the data from various satellites. We can club the data from the various satellites so that the temporal interval is reduced. So, there are ways by which we can get the frequent data of the same area may not be from the same satellite, but some satellites have the uh, uh, flexibility to change the uh, another view uh, angle and we can get the same area photographed again. So, we can reduce this time interval and if uh, we want to analyze the data every day that is also possible from sun synchronous satellites by using the combination. So, this is the of Nader capability several satellites have this is the example of the spot French satellites. So, you can see here that the satellite is moving along this particular path looking at this particular area. So, at diff in different orbits at time t 1 at time t 2 at time t 3 at time t 4 when it is moving in the different orbits it is looking at the same area because the uh, of another capability this view angle is changed so that it can view the same area. So, when we want uh, the images of the same area from the same satellite and the same sensor. So, there are some satellites which are capable to give us the of another capability viewing capability and we can collect temporal data of the same area in order to analyze that. The last class is the uh, radiometric resolution of the data and this is also very very important characteristics to us. Uh, when uh, we are dealing with the number of gray levels which are present in the satellite images, uh, we are basically dealing with the radiometric resolution. So, finally, the radiometric resolution of a sensor the more sensitive it is to detect the changes. So, we want a sensor uh, which takes the data in at a finer uh, radiometric resolution. So, this is the ability of the sensor to detect the incoming radiation and minor variation if it is taking place because the of the changes or because of the characteristics of the objects. So, if we have a better radiometric resolution image it is easier to distinguish between the diff two different objects which are present on the ground. We can see here uh, radiometric resolution we have uh, in terms of the bits and bytes it is represented if we have data from 7 bit or 8 bit or 9 bit or 10 bit what is the meaning of 7 bit data is 2 to the power 7 this is comes out to be 128. So, we have 0 to 127 because 0 is also counted here. So, we have so many gray levels 128 gray levels which are present in the data because 0 is also number counted. So, 8 bit data will have 2 to the power 8 and here we have 256 gray levels ranging from 0 to 255. So, likewise the more the number of bits better is the clarity resolution of the radiometric resolution of the data. So, uh, nowadays you know earlier we had a 6 bit satellite images nowadays we have higher bit satellite images in order to have more and more clarity. Now, I am showing you as an example here a 2 bit data where we have you know 4 gray levels here and 64 gray levels a 6 bit data gray levels value. So, out of the two images when we visually inspect those two images we can certainly say that this particular image which is on the right side is much much better as compared to the left because uh, we can see much more many number of gray shades in this image and its radiometric resolution is much much better. 
So, this is again a flower and we can see uh, the petals of the flowers also we can count in fact at a better resolution image. So, we have uh, the top one is 8 bit image and the, the last image the bottom one is uh, lower bit image. So, we can see as you just change the bits then the blurness in the image or the information content which we were able to see in the higher radiometric resolution that is also gone. So, you are not able to you just get the impression here that this is a flower, but you are not able to see the further details of that. So, radiometric resolution is playing very very important role as you can see from this data uh, on the top we have 8 bit data, 4 bit data, 2 bit data and 1 bit data. So, 1 bit data will have only 2 gray levels black and white. So, only 2 gray shades are present here whereas, we have 256 levels present in the first image. So, if we compare the two together visually to my eye if we can identify many more gray shades uh, now in the top image which is the 8 bit data as compared to the 2 levels data where only 2 gray shades we can identify. So, if we try to compare now the uh, satellite based resolution a spatial resolution, the spectral resolution and the temporal resolution from the various kinds of the satellites. So, we have a varying range of that spatial, spectral and temporal resolution. So, uh, higher the uh, spatial resolution more is the cost of the satellite data this also we have to remember. So, uh, once we have uh, this kind of a knowledge we can select right kind of a data for our application. And this particular diagram is showing that uh, on x axis if we have a spatial resolution in meter and kilometer and on y axis we have the temporal resolution and we know what kind of a application is there. So, we can try to correlate that at what spatial resolution and what temporal resolution how many images I require. Suppose, I have to carry out the uh, study related to the precision agriculture. So, I will see that what are the satellites which is the spatial resolution I can use and what is the temporal resolution I can use. So, that I can optimize my selection. So, this kind of a diagram can give me a uh, guidelines that uh, what kind of a satellite image at what resolution and at what frequency I should select for a particular application. Because remember that the spatial resolution and the temporal resolution uh, it is all costing you the uh, money you require higher funds if you unnecessary procure a uh, lot of images which are not required or very high resolution images which are not required you could have done a similar study at a medium resolution satellite image. This is uh, another slide which shows here the spatial resolution on x axis and the spectral resolution at what spectral resolution what are those wavelength bands I should select for a particular type of a study. So, we have different curves here uh, like agriculture or resource natural resource survey or maybe the urban mapping. So, this gives me the range that this is the range in which I should select my spectral bands and this is the spatial resolution. So, spatial resolution and spectral band range I can select, but if I look at the uh, you know this particular part which is the visible part of the spectrum uh, many many applications have the overlap into that region. So, that means the visible part the data which is in the visible part of the spectrum may be quite useful for a very very large number of application. So, this is all about the different types of spatial resolution thank you.